Hello, beautiful friends. I am Laurel Bleeden Maffei with Illuminating Souls, welcoming you to this episode of Sleepy Bedtime Blessings, a podcast designed to help you rest, relax, and fall asleep, all while deepening in your connection with your beautiful team of angels who love you so. If we're meeting for the first time, I am an angelic practitioner, a spiritual teacher, and an encourager of souls. And I am here to help you awaken to your magic all while falling asleep. (laughs) How's that for a, a good intention? Opening up to your magic and getting a good night's sleep all at the same time. During my waking hours, I offer one-on-one angel sessions, soul mentoring, and a variety of classes, and you can learn more all about that at my website, Illuminating Souls. But for now, the angels and I are here to help you get a good expanse of rest and sleep. As many of you know, I have been using sleep podcasts for years to help me build a bridge between wake and sleep, and I love them. They really support me. And so I was guided to create sleepy bedtime blessings for you. And it's not only because the sound of a loving, soothing voice can help us drift off to sleep, but I'm also a big believer that that time right before we go to sleep and also during our sleep is a a beautiful time to clear our energy and set our intentions that there's something very magical about the astral realm and working with the angels, that it enables us to clear out old patterns, lift and calibrate our energy fields, and so much more. One of the skills I learned at the University of Santa Monica is what they call a bedtime intention. And what they teach is that space right before we go to bed is a wonderful time to put in a request with God and the angels. So for instance, a bedtime intention might be God, angels, I ask, that you help to clear my energy field tonight as I sleep so that I waken in the morning feeling light and filled with joy and purpose. I also will ask to be given inspiration on what to offer in terms of a next class or a podcast episode. Our astral life is really full and rich, even if we do not recall it when we are awake. It is a beautiful opportunity to heal and to receive inspiration and to become even more of who we are. So take a deep breath in, breathing in the beautiful light that is you. And this is a special episode, everyone. This is my 50th episode. 50. 5-0. My 50th episode. And also, the day of its release happens to be my 60th birthday. (laughs) Happy birthday to me. 6-0. I don't know what I thought 60 was going to feel like, but it feels a lot like my 40s. (laughs) It feels good. So I wanted to make this a special episode, a gift, if you will, 
from my heart to yours. Because some of the reasons that episode 50 on my 60th feels so profoundly special is because I am living a dream. I am living this beautiful life. I get to live my purpose. I get to work with the angels and I get to know you. You're the answer to a prayer. I prayed and wished and hoped that I could live a life like this one where I could connect with the heart and support and love others on their journeys of awakening and coming into their magic and here we are. So I thought for this episode I would share with you some of the moments of my own awakening. And the thing that's going to be important as you listen to this episode is please do not allow the stories that I'm going to share with you to put me on any kind of pedestal because that is not the reason I'm sharing it with you. I don't want you to think that wow, she's super cool, and if those things happened to me, I would know I am special. Because that's not how our lives work. You, too, have your own story. Whether it's your story of awakening, your story of coming into your heart. And it's just when we recount them, when we string all the pearls of our life together, that they can sound so profoundly magical. So you have a magical story too. So as I share my magical story with you, let me assure you it did not feel magical while it was happening. Quite often, our stories are really difficult as we are moving through them. And mine felt that way, even though it likely wasn't. And it's only when we're sitting in our metaphoric rocking chairs years later that when we recount all the experiences we have, they take on this rarefied patina of magic. So I'm going to be sharing with you some of my experiences and what brought me to this moment. But first, we're going to call in the angels because they're here already, and it is my greatest joy to share them with you. They're there with you already, too. Not because I am here, but because you are there. Just a sweet reminder, you do not need me to connect with your angels. The relationship with your angels is all yours. It belongs to you. I'm just here to help you open up to what already is. And it is my joy to do so. I will help amplify your connection with your angels for a long time to come. But just so you know, this relationship belongs to you. You get to take the angels home with you and come into intimate relationship with them outside of this podcast. But go ahead and take a deep breath in and release. And go ahead and get cozy, whatever that means for you. It's okay if you drift off. You can always go back and listen to it later. So don't resist the urge to fall asleep because you think you'll be missing something interesting I'm going to say. The beautiful thing about this podcast is these episodes are going to be up for a long, long time. I purposely picked a host that will keep them up there in perpetuity, whatever that is going to mean in the digital footprint of podcasts. So you don't have to listen to it all tonight or whenever you are listening. So you cozy on up and snuggle on in. 
I love snuggling in. <laughs> That's why I always use that word. It makes me happy. And I'm here in my blanket fort. So I have a big blanket pulled over my head as I record this for you. So I am cozied on up and snuggly too with you. And we'll call in the angels. And beautiful angels on high, I ask that you join us here. I ask that you infuse this broadcast with waves of divine love, calibrated in a way that is unique to each of our beloveds gathered here. I ask that you bring forward waves of love and service to healing and service to lightness of spirit and service of sparks of inspiration that assist each one of us in opening to an even brighter experience of life. And angels, as we sleep, I ask that you tend to the places inside that hurt, helping to clear out any places that feel tender. Help us to move through any challenges that life is presenting, helping us walk our path or travel our path with love knowing that we are supported. Knowing that we are beloved in this universe. So dear ones, just take a nice deep breath in, allowing this love to pour over you. Opening to divine source energy to help clear your energy field through the heart of God. And as your energy field is cleared, you become even more yourself than ever before as you open to even more of your authentic, beautiful, divine self. Take another deep breath in and release. And even as I say these words, I feel the love of the angels traveling through this moment to find you wherever you are. That even if you are listening to this broadcast years later, that the angels are not bound by time nor space. And so this love is traveling to you now. The beautiful thing about divine love is it knows who you are. It knows the deepest parts of your heart and it knows what you need what you are craving and it knows the dreams of your heart so it flows to you now in service to your highest and best good so take a deep breath in and receive good and allow your body to relax you have done enough for today. And you have permission to let go and drift off. And while you do, the angels will be watching over you. And I am going to be sharing with you stories from my journey. Most of what I'm going to be sharing with you is about the year of my awakening and beyond, which started in 2000. I'll quickly summarize that prior to 2000, I had opened to the world of metaphysics and new age and 
had had some psychic experiences, but I was still very much in the perspective and perception of who I was as an earth girl. Those of you who've been with me a long time know that I use the term earth girl to refer to my personality self. She's the part of me that gets overwhelmed and upset and dramatic and the one that forgets that there are angels and that I'm able to connect with them. So, so prior to 2000, I was definitely anchored in my earth girl perception of myself and the world around me. And I had a good life. I really did. I don't want to sound ungrateful. I had a good job. I was healthy. I had beautiful friends. I lived in Los Angeles. I had my dog. But I also was inherently unhappy. And I didn't know why. At the time, I thought it was because I was overweight. Um, for any of you who have spent time in your life dealing with weight issues, you know that it can become a red herring for anything else that is causing unhappiness, right? If I lose the weight, then I'll be happy, which is not true. Well, maybe it is sometimes. I don't mean to make a generalization. <laughs> but anyways, I spent so much of my adult life chasing that belief that if I could just lose the weight, then I would be happy. So that was my story. It might not be yours. And I really believe that my awakening began with this dream that I'm going to share with you that happened somewhere around January or February. I don't remember exactly when, but it was early in 2000. And I'm calling it a dream because that was my experience. But I really believe it was a visitation. I had a teacher once say that the way you could tell the difference between a dream and a visitation is that a visitation, you will remember it years afterwards, all the details. And that certainly has been my experience. So in my dream, I awaken. And there is the cutest boy in the world floating above my bed. Now, when I say boy, he was a man, but that was my terminology, yes. Right, I was still the girl who thought of cute guys as cute boys, even though they were men. So that was my vernacular in my dream. And he was floating above my bed, not in a scary, ghostly way, but in a way that felt very comforting. And as soon as I saw him, I knew him at the deepest parts of my being. And I knew that he knew me and that I loved him and he loved me, but love is not the right word for it. Every molecule of my beingness was beloved. I was love and he was love. It reminds me of how when people talk about near-death experiences, they talk about this expansive love and light that is beyond what we experience here on Earth. And that's what I experienced was this awareness that everything that I was was loved by him. And I loved him the same way. And I threw my arms around him and I started weeping. And I said, where have you been? I miss you. And he said, you decided to do this one alone. And I said, well, I changed my mind. Come back. <laughs> and after a period of time, he took me to these mirrored 
wardrobe doors that were in front of my bed. So, not uncommon in Los Angeles apartments, I had mirrored doors to my closet that were in front of my bed. And he says, I need to show you something. And it was one of those dreams where I was so afraid I would lose him or I would wake up. Have you ever had those dreams? I was so afraid I would lose him in the dream. And he took me by the hand and he pointed to my reflection in the mirror. And he said, this is not who you are. You are so much more than this. And I looked at my reflection and I didn't understand because I saw my flaws. I saw my weight. I saw that which I had not yet become. I was living my story of not enoughness. And I started crying harder. I said, I don't understand. And he pointed at my reflection again. He said, this is not who you are. You are so much more than this. And then he took me by my hand and he led me through. The, the mirrors became a portal like Stargate. And he led me into the mirrors, into the portal. And he showed me three different lifetimes when we had lived together as healers. And they were beautiful. And then I woke up in my bed, sobbing. I was bereft. I had felt this quality of love that I had been longing for my entire life. And now I was alone. I was alone like I was before I went to bed, but this time I knew what I had been aching for. And it was a profoundly light-filled and challenging experience to be given a taste of that which I did not yet have. So that was the start. I really believe that that visitation opened a portal for me. And when I, when I speak of the quality of divine love, I refer to that experience I had in the dream. That was my first taste of it. Like there really could be love that did not exist with a polarity involved. Right? I love you until I can't love you anymore. It was really this profoundly expansive, all-inclusive love. What I recognize now is I would then spend the next five or six years trying to get back to that kind of love. And I will tell you that that is the quality of love that flows through my work. So I was able to finally, with help from God and the angels and probably my beautiful, beloved guide from the other side, to find a way to cultivate that in life, but that's where it started. That was the moment that the portal opened. And then there were many other things that happened that year. Some I've shared with you already on the podcast. One that I will share with you that I haven't talked about before is somewhere around April of that year, I was reading the book, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. I remember reading, I think in Oprah's magazine that Ellen DeGeneres had suggested that Oprah read the book because it had changed Ellen's life. And I thought, well, if it's good enough for Ellen and Oprah, I should probably read it too. And it's a good book. 
It's, it's a wonderful book, but this was the moment that cracked me open. I don't have the exact quote with me, but I'll paraphrase. In the book, Don Miguel Ruiz writes that death is not the greatest fear that humans have. The greatest fear they have is being really alive, living their life is what the greatest fear is. And something about that cracked me open because in that moment it all came whooshing to me how I was biding my time until whether it was 40 or 50 years from then that I would get to go home and be reunited with my soul that this life here was sort of a way station of sorts until I could get to live my full self. And I realized in that moment how fascinated I had been with things like past life regressions, near death experiences, you know, anything that talked about that portal into the other side, I was fascinated with much more fascinated than I was with the idea of being alive and living. And that was really terrifying and profoundly deepening to recognize. And I'm sure, I don't remember specifically doing this, but there was something about that awareness that I know my heart cried out with a prayer like, teach me how to live. Teach me how to live a full life as me. What would that look like? What would I do? So that was another one of those moments where I knew something was moving within me. So now I'm going to flash forward to August of that year. It's not as if with these experiences I all of a sudden was bright and shiny and magical. I was still really unhappy. Right now I just was more aware of how unhappy I was. <laughs> That's the thing about awakening and healing is that it often gets worse before it gets better. So things have not yet felt magical. Um, and they still won't for quite some time. Here's the next thing that I want to share with you about. So, I somehow hurt my back and my job was really stressful at the time. I was working as a market analyst for an entertainment company. We did an analysis of sales of home video and I was really deep into a coding project where I was spending hours every day hunched over my computer coding away. And at some point, I injured my back. And it was awful. <laughs> awful. I couldn't sit. I couldn't stand. I kept going to the doctor. Um, they tried to give me injections. I mean, it was just really one of those. If you've ever hurt your back, you know what I'm talking about. And to help try and get some relief, I found my way to a chiropractor who worked out of a massage school in West LA. And he was really steeped in the Eastern traditions. He really had that calm, wise energy that I just opened to. And I would go and I would lay on his chiropractic table and I would cry. And one day he said to me, he said, you know why this is happening, don't you? And I said, I don't. He said, it's because you're not doing what you came here to do. He said, do you know what that is? And out of seemingly nowhere, I said, I'm a healer. And he said, yes, you are. And I started to sob. It was like my soul opened up. Right? He says, it's because you're not doing what you came here to do. 
You know what you came here to do? I'm a healer. I'm a healer. I'm a healer. And the vibration, the words, it was like awakening and remembering. I'm a healer. And also not knowing what that meant. Like, what did that mean? What did that mean? I didn't know. So I cried a lot more. And the next week, I went in to see him. And I said, I don't understand. What does that mean? I'm a healer. And he, this is what he said to me, just like this. He says, I don't know, but you could go to the University of Santa Monica and get your degree in spiritual psychology. He said it just like that. And the second he said it, I knew that was my truth. I just knew it. I had known about USM. I hadn't known anyone who'd gone there. But they advertised in the back of a local metaphysical magazine that I would pick up. And so I know I'd looked at their ads before, so I knew they existed. But I hadn't really contemplated going there. But that afternoon, that's what he said. Well, you could go to the University of Santa Monica and get your degree in spiritual psychology. And I said, okay. Not because he was my guru and was telling me to do that, but because when he said that, it was my truth. And, and I want to interject something really important here, something I believe with my whole heart and soul, that when we hear our truth, we know our truth. If you've ever had a session with me, you know that I often ask questions like, does this resonate for you? How does this feel to you? Not because I'm asking you to make me right, but because you have a tuning fork inside of you. And when you hear your truth, it clicks in. So in that moment, it was a truth. I still didn't understand that. All I knew was this was a yes. And I went back to the office because it was the middle of the day. And I called USM, not really knowing anything about their program. And I got one of their advisors on the phone. And he said, do you, what, you know, what can I help you with? How, what can I tell you about the program? I said, I need to know when it starts. And this was September at that point. And he said, we start the first weekend in October. And he said, we have, I can't remember, I'm going to make this up, but he said something like, we have 12 spots available. I said, well, now you have 11 because I'm going to give you my credit card. He said, do you want to know more about the program? I said, no, I just know I'm supposed to be there. And I gave him my credit card. I, I just knew I was supposed to be there. And I'm really glad in hindsight that I didn't know anyone who'd been through the program because everything about the program was a miracle to me. So I had no expectations. I didn't know, oh, this is this process that my friend told me about. Just every month was a new reveal. So at the time, the way USM was set up was it met one weekend a month. We would go Friday from 7 p.m. till about 10. And then we would go all day Saturday from, I think, 9 a.m. to to 9 p.m. It was a long day. And then Sundays from maybe 10 to 7. I don't quite remember the hours. And there were 270 of us in the class. And it was designed to teach us these different counseling skills and teaching us a lot about the spiritual connection of life. So I signed up. Like, here you go, here's my money, I'm coming. Again, not having any idea how that would change my life. I wasn't going to do this work. I wasn't going to become a psychologist. I was going because 
I needed to know who I was. Who was I? Who was I? <laughs> who was I? Who was I going to be when I grew up? Because it wasn't what I thought I was. I'm a heat blur. What does that even mean? Right? The dream back to the guide who said, this is not who you are. You are so much more than this. Like all the pieces are starting to string together. So the first weekend of USM, the first night that we're there, they begin with some tenants. They say that we're going to all agree on these tenants throughout the program. Just try them on for size. And the first one was some variation of you are a soul having a human experience. Another way could be said, you're a divine being having a human experience. What does that mean? Well, it means inherently you are whole and complete. Your greater self, your authentic self, your soul self, your higher self is whole and complete and filled with wisdom for you. That you are not your flaws, that you are not your stories, that you are not your wounds. You are a divine being having a human experience. And this was a revelation for me. It didn't come to me right away. It took me a while to fully breathe into that. Months, many, many months. Because I had so built my, identi my identity on my earthly experience. These were my flaws. These were my shortcomings. This is what I was really good at. These were my accomplishments. That polarity-based model where we either are in a place of grandness or inadequacy, right? It's, it's a teeter-totter. But this idea that there was this greater expanse of me, not only of me, but of all of us, of you too, that was wise and timeless and always filled with love, was a profound revelation, not only intellectually, but experientially. What happened when we would connect with our greater spirit, and they had different exercises to help us with that, and again, it changed everything for me. And then the other thing that was happening simultaneously was we would do these counseling processes. And when we did the counseling experiences, we would rotate in a trio. And we would rotate the positions of client, right? That's where we would process some of our material with our fellow students. Counselor, and that would be where we would try to put to use the skills we were learning, and the neutral observer, which was holding space and witnessing what was happening. And when we would be in the counselor chair, it wasn't about advice giving. I had always been a good advice giver, right? I know what your problem is, and I know how to help you solve it. <laughs> this was really about holding space and encouraging another asking open-ended questions to make space for another's process. And something miraculous would happen. It's like the love would come through. Spirit would come through. God would come through. And there would be healing and transformation. And I discovered that I could feel this. I could feel the magnificence of the light flowing through when I was in the counselor chair. Now again, I don't want to make it sound like I was super special and I was the only one this happened to. I think if you talk to anyone who's gone through USM, 
they had those experiences too. That this expansive, profound love, light, consciousness, presence would flow through in service to the person we were holding for. And when it flowed through for them, it flowed through for us as well, because this light, this energy is generous. And it does not come from the own, our own personal energy, although our own personal energy is in it. It comes from the greater expanse of divine love and wisdom. So my whole experience at USM as a student went on for three years. I did the first two-year program, which was the master's degree. And then I went back for a third year for consciousness, health, and healing. So I was really blessed. I had a lot of time in these processes. And what I began to discover was this expression of love, of divine love, was what I had been seeking. So, when I had that dream, this is what I was seeking to return to. Awakening as a healer, this is what I was seeking to return to, even if it wasn't written on a business card or I knew how to create a practice around it. And somewhere in those, my first two years, I did a lot of sobbing. I did a lot of crying because part of the journey of healing is getting in touch with everything that's up for healing. It's not like it just is miraculously lifted. It's holding shards of our hearts up to the light and rewriting or renegotiating how we hold for our journeys. So I had this practice of crying in the shower every morning. I would just feel the waves of sorrow coming up and I would sob it out. And the angels at some point, I didn't know it was the angels at that point, I would have said it was spirit, would say, you don't have to know what you're crying about, just let it out. You've stored sorrow in your energy field and you could be crying about something that happened when you were 12 years old on a Tuesday, just let it out. And I would cry it out in the shower and let it all go down the drain and then get ready for my day. At some point, I became aware of the concept of homesickness for light workers. You know that this realm isn't my home. Like, what am I doing here? <laughs> What's this incarnation about? But I was aware that I was profoundly homesick. So one morning when I was sobbing about my homesickness, I felt the angels or spirit come in and say, you know, you have it wired that you can't experience home here. And as long as you hold that belief, that'll be your reality. And they said, here's what we recommend. Please ask the prayer of God, help me create a life here that feels like home. I took a deep breath in and I said, okay, God, help me create a life here that feels like home. I don't know what that would look like or feel like, but I, I can't do this like this anymore. Help me create a life here that feels like home. One of the most powerful prayers I ever emitted. Again, it's not like something magical happened the next day, but... My life began to unfold and lead me into a direction where this life now feels like home. Listen, Earth has its problems. I totally get what's going on in the world. But I can tell you with profound sincerity that I rarely feel homesick anymore. I get to live with my angels and all of you and my husband and so much love in my life. I don't get homesick anymore. I, I'm, I'm here for the duration. Whenever it is time for God to call me home, I will go home. But for now, I am delighted to be here. I 
absolutely could not have said that to you before 2000. So I highly recommend that prayer. God, help me create a life here that feels like home and just see what changes. The other piece that I'll share is sort of how the angels began to weave into this. So in 2004, USM had another program they introduced, which was soul-centered leadership, which sounded like exactly what I wanted, right? They were going to teach me how to hang out a shingle and make a business out of whatever this was. And so I signed up for the program. And I think I was in it two or three months. And as I was there, I started to get the sinking feeling that this was not what I was looking for, which was really hard to process because I wanted it to be my answer. I loved USM. It worked for me. I wanted USM to be my answer because it was going to be such an easy answer. I would go through this program and then I would hang out my shingle and life would be good. But here's what kept moving through me. I want to open to my mystical gifts, not having any idea what that meant. I had no idea what that would mean. I'd had some mystical experiences, but there was this calling in my heart. I want to open to my mystical gifts. I had the request but no idea what that meant. So I would sometimes flip through a metaphysical magazine to see what classes were being taught elsewhere, to see what sparked and nothing sparked. And I even went to one of my teachers at USM and asked her, and she gave me a recommendation, which did not feel like my truth. Remember, when you hear your truth, you know your truth. So I kept looking for my answer. In the meanwhile, a couple of my USM friends had studied with Doreen Virtue. They had taken her angel therapy practitioner class. And I remember thinking at the time of how sweet that was. Um, not in a patronizing way, but more like, that is so sweet. I'm so happy that they found what works for them. But nothing inside of me said, and you should go too was something I was delighted for my friends to experience. But one night, as I was contemplating how do I open to my mystical gifts, I found myself on Doreen Virtue's website. And she had a variety of classes she was offering at the time. Two of them jumped out at me. The first was her angel messenger training class that she was going to be teaching in May of 2005 in Glastonbury, England. Now, I had had some exposure to the idea of Glastonbury and the goddess and the priestess, and it just, whoa, talk about sparking something in me. The other class was a small group mediumship class that she was going to be teaching I think in October of 2004. And this is what I felt and heard. A voice, spirit, the angels, whatever we want to call it, said, if you want to get where you're going, take these two classes. Just like this. Don't whittle it down to size and don't make it make sense. Just take these two classes. The same voice that said, go to USM and get a master's degree in spiritual psychology. So I said, okay. I got out my credit card and I signed up for both of those classes. And I understand why they said don't make it make sense because she was also teaching the angel therapy practitioner training in Laguna which was closer to me. I didn't have to fly all the way to England and I think that's why they said Mm -mm, do it this way. And so I registered for both of those classes. And that opened up a whole other doorway for me, which is going to be a whole other episode of what happened when I went to study with Doreen. And just as an aside, um, I think 
most of you have heard of her work before, and some of you may have not. Um, something I should tell you if you haven't is that um, she was my teacher for a long time. She was many of our teachers. She wrote many best-selling books and created gorgeous oracle decks, one of which I still use almost every day. But several years ago, she became a born-again Christian. She's an evangelical Christian now, and she has walked back and recalled all of her earlier work, including what I studied with her. And this is what I reference back to, if any of you are confused by that. I didn't open to my gifts with the angels, and I have not devoted my life to this work because she told me to, right? She happened to be one of the teachers who helped me on my awakening. And when you hear your truth, you know your truth. So there were elements, not every single thing she taught resonated for me. But there were pearls of wisdom, and there were experiences that I had as her student that opened me to more of who I was. And that's the thing to remember. When we study with someone, when we learn, those teachings become ours. We metabolize them, and they begin to dwell within our own consciousness. So I am deeply, deeply grateful to her, just like I am deeply grateful to Ron and Mary Holnick, who were my teachers at USM. I am grateful to all of the teachers who held the door open for me to awaken to who I am. And whether they change their paths or not, whether they continue to believe in what they taught, it doesn't have a lot of relevancy for me because this is my connection with God. It's my connection with the angels. Just as I hold space for you to open to your own connection, your connection will be different than mine, yes? Each of us is a unique, beautiful, divine being that is the breath of God, having unique experience here on earth. And your journey is yours, as mine is my own as well. And whether you listen to my podcast or work with me as a teacher or a mentor, I hold the door open for you to open to who you are what your divine connection is. I may give you some tools along the way, but what you build with those tools is up to you. I'm not at all a believer in a one-size-fits-all solution to life. Each of us is working with our own unique curriculum, our own set of challenges, the stories we've internalized over the years, but here is what I believe, that divine love is the elixir that helps heal and uplift. It is a frequency, it is an energy that is a building block of this universe. And when we connect with it, we become even more of who we are. And that's why I wanted to share this part of my journey with you in this episode. That dream that I had in 2000, when I awakened to the cutest boy in the world over my bed, and I felt this unconditional divine love, the likes of which I had never experienced before in my life. That was this kind of love. This is the kind of love I seek to bring forward for you in the podcasts, in sessions, in my classes, that you know that everything that you are is loved. Everything, everything that you are is loved. 
just like sunshine. You go out into the sun and the sun is not saying, well, I'm not going to shine on that part of you because that part of you is really sucks. <laughs> and if the sun can do that, how could God's love be any less powerful than the sun? All that you are is loved, my beloveds. All that you are is loved. All that you are is love. And all that you are is loved. You are a blessing in this world. And you are worthy of the stars and the moon and the sky. You are worthy of being cherished. You are worthy of being surrounded by those who will treat you well and will want the very best for you in a way that is in alignment with the what you desire from you, yes? So may this episode be a blessing to you. May it help you awaken to the brightness and the beauty of all that you are. You're a miracle. You're magnificent because everything I've shared with you here today, while they may be unique threads of my story, they didn't happen because I'm super special or chosen. And it's not that I'm not super awesome. <laughs> yeah, I say that, yes, you can get my self deprecation here, I hope. Right? It's not that I think I'm magical. Yes, I'm magical, and I'm awesome. I don't mean that I'm not any of those things. But I'm not more magical or more awesome than you are. If anything, how it feels to me is if I'm magical and awesome, oh my God, so are you. Like, let's all be magical and awesome, for sure. And, and our, our experiences of magical awesomeness may be different, right? The way my magic comes through me it's going to be different than how your magic comes through you, but it's still super cool. It's still needed. It's still beautiful. And so all of those experiences and so much more are what led me to this moment with you right now. That beautiful guide who met me in my dream. The chiropractor who said, well, you could go to USM and get a master's degree in spiritual psychology. To the voice that said, if you want to get where you're going, take these two classes. Go to Glastonbury and take mediumship. All of those moments and everything in between led me here with you. And there's more. I'll have to do an episode at some point about my experience with opening to the angels, because that's a whole other episode. It'll come soon. I'll, I'll share it with you at some point. But for now, thank you so much for helping me co-create this space where I can share a little bit of my heart with you. Isn't it beautiful? Like, here we are. I get to share a bit of my heart with you, and hopefully it's helping you connect with more of your heart, too. Because I bet you could easily fill an hour sharing your story with me about what led you to this moment. So let's declare this moment as beautiful and sacred. A moment when more of the light of God is flowing in to help illuminate each of our divine paths here on earth. I am glad to be incarnated with you here and now you help my life feel more like home and for that I am grateful so I am going to bid you sweet dreams for now I will be back before you know it with another episode for you but for now thank you for helping me celebrate episode number 50 I am grateful for you and I thank God for you sweet dreams we'll talk again soon <laughs>